one of the things that the people don't appreciate is that uh, traditional society, Kamba being one, had and enforced their rules better than Western society or Christian society. Most of the rules were not questioned. This is the way we live, and you can't do you can't do A B C D. Um, there are many points of intersection between Christianity and Kamba culture, and for that matter, the two can coexist. The problem lies not in these two ways of life, but in the ways in which this generation have, has come to interpret Christianity and the Christian teaching. A lot of Western religions, they are derived from African culture, not necessarily Kamba culture, but African culture. If you look at if you look at Christianity, for example, a lot of issues about Christianity really started from Ethiopia and from Egypt, Africa. So, and we as Kambas also had a role to play in this. So, I don't want to say that uh, Christianity is in contract, contrast with Kamba culture. No, I wouldn't. The distinction you would want me to make about Christian culture and traditional culture, there is such a big similarity, especially when you look at the Old Testament. Those things of those sacrifices and uncleanness and how to deal with it and so on. I took Christianity in 1935. You know now religion is only one of the aspects of culture. Do affect the religious part of the culture. When you make a change in religion, then you have made a change in part of your um, religious culture. The African way of, you know, perception of God is different. The two of them cannot, uh, I have repeatedly said they cannot marry because the African concept of God is totally different from the Christian uh, concept of God. The Akamba <laughs> worshipped Mulungu. Uh, God was not brought to Africa by Christianity or Islam. God had always been in Africa. Christianity did not teach Kamba to love their neighbors as they love themselves. The Kamba already knew that and it was part of their culture. Mulungu was not a stone or a mountain or a tree. It's just that there were sacred trees and sacred places where they went to worship. But they didn't worship those things, so they were not idol worshippers. Much of what we refer to as Christianity here is not Christianity at all. It's Christianity plus European culture. They were using Christianity as a way to condemn cultural practices, but without a biblical basis for that. If you have a verse that says people should stop Please let me know. Let me know that first. What seems to be in conflict with our culture is European culture, and not Christianity. Majority of the things that we we call Christian way of life were already in a traditional Kamba custom. Um, so if you look at the the commandments, the ten commandments of Moses, they they, 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 they are comparable, comparable to Kamba uh, custom or customary laws. Tell me anything in the Ten Commandments that is in conflict with the Kamba culture. You know, Kamba used to worship. You are not supposed to tell lies. You are not supposed to go with another man's wife or husband. You are not supposed to tell a lie. You are not supposed to kill. You are not supposed to insult your mother. Tell me just one commandment in the Bible that is in conflict with Kamba culture. None. And 
when we talk, some of the things that seem to be in conflict with the Kamba culture or African culture have nothing to do with the Christianity. Christianity means following Christ. Where in the Gospels, what verse in the Gospels did Jesus tell people that you must become Jane or Charles or William? Where in what Gospel? Where did Jesus say? In a synagogue or a dozen people that for you to be my follower for you to get into my, my father's house you must change your name to become Mary to become Joseph so these are European names Africans have always been praising or praying to their God, interacting with their God. So the, 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 the issue of thinking that Christianity can come or, or Islam can come to, to change the African perception of God, this is, uh, I, I'm saying. Understanding or learning one's culture is a solution to colonialism, imperialism, because when we don't un understand our own culture. We have a tendency to go around preaching things that are not sustainable. My take is this. Jane is not any, any more Christian than Kalundu at all, as, as far as I'm concerned. Because there's nowhere where Jesus said that uh, people should become Jane or people should be called the Julius, or people, kids are just things that have develop, developed because of cultural issues. Uh, so, um, I am called Kizako Maria. He told you that you go to the same church. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. If, for some reason or the other, I don't make it to heaven, and God forbid, I think I will, most likely I will. But should, if I don't, it will have nothing to do with the fact that uh, I don't use a Christian name. It will be a problem because I don't live a peer's life. So, so to me, uh, suggesting that uh, Christianity and the Kamba culture are incompatible, what you might be suggesting is that probably some aspects of European culture are not compatible with the uh, Kamba culture. It is not that they are in conflict, it is how they mesh and engage with each other uh, so that they can survive. So in my view, I think Christianity is embracing certain aspects of our culture, and our culture is also being transformed because of Christianity, what we have been exposed. My son is getting married, uh, probably to your sister. And we come there and they want us to bring the goat when it's alive. And they want us to slaughter it and pour the blood. Now I'll have a conflict with that. I will bring the goat, like one time I did, and it will be slaughtered. And the blood is given to the dogs because I don't want to be involved in that sacrifice, and yet I'm in another sacrifice, because that syncretism, mixing two systems, can make one run mad, can affect your mental health. And actually, mental health is affected a lot by mixing up systems that are not mixable. Who defines Christianity? What is that? They are... I mean, people practice in different ways of worshipping the Christian God. When I came to the United States, I was shocked to find a church that meets once a month. Hmm. And I was used to a form of worship that we will, we will meet on Sunday, Wednesday we will go to fellowship, and on Friday we we'll spend the whole night praying and uh, fasting and uh, uh, singing the whole night, right? Uh, coming here, no no such a thing, like uh, staying vigilant, no. The sermons are 15 minutes, we are done. <laughs> okay, so people practice Christianity in different ways. And divination is wanting in Okamba. What is Christianity? Where, 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 what is the, where is the boundary between Kamba culture and the Christian culture? What the Muslim call, calls a witch doctor is a contradiction. You can't be a doctor and a witch at the same time. And there's nothing like that in, in, African, in African language. Whether it's Pokot, whether it's Oluo, whether it's Ndebele, whether it's Zulu, uh, that is just a distortion of things. I like 
Ngugi wa Dion. He wrote a good book the colonizing the African mind. You know, they taught us that Moses got, got his uh, command, got commandment from Mount Sinai. But when a Kikuyu Zilot comes to Mount Kenya to seek blessing, they say this is paganism. So what's the difference between this mountain and the other mountain? We also push that at the wearing of Western style too far. Somebody is wearing a calendar suit when it is 19 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit and is drinking hot tea. Come on. And he's a gentleman. But when we wear within, that is seen as repulsive. Jesus is baptized in the river Jordan. But when a Maasai construct a house with the door facing the waterway, it's paganism. This is a language that does not belong to a generation. It is a language of the 19th century and the early 20th century. It's mockery, it's insulting. You will not get a, you know, a seat in, a, in any plane, uh, seat number 13, because uh, it's bad woman. Uh, you, you know, in buildings in America, in Europe, you, you will not get floor number 13. You, you know, it will be 12 and then after that, go 14. Now, for them, that is just something cultural. If that happens here, they call it exposition. The first miracle of Christ was turning water into wine. And it was good wine. People were pretty tipsy, intoxicated, and he did not have problem with that. But the missionary told, hey, stop drinking completely. The last mission he did on earth was to supply, to give his followers wine. And we still drink it as a part of our communion, right? Without thinking, okay, what are we doing? I'm talking about the Kamba Christian. There is a problem of understanding and interpreting Christianity and the Bible. So all this thing about, uh, you know, branding as uh, witch doctors, I can tell you the, you know, the, you know, uh, uh, the herbalist in Ukambani, it's not, it's not a mchawi. And therefore we need to maintain that. And I say, I have evidence, probably I will not be living today, uh, if we need a herbalist in Taraka. All civilizations are equal. That's all. It's only that when we make in judgment, that's where dif the difference comes. When we say, mm, these people drink in blood, that's an uncivilized. You see, the people who drink in blood don't care about it. It, it gives them vitality. Huh? They, at least they think so. By drinking blood, instead of eating meat itself, it gives them more stamina than anything else. And it's good. Uh, the Kamba used to drink blood. The Maasai used to drink blood and they sometimes mix it with the milk. Until you find the context, the, the context, and you find the history, the origin of that custom, you can't understand it. You can only say, eh. I don't see anything that one can see as conflicting between Christianity per se and the Kamba culture. If it's Christianity plus other people's way of doing things, of course, then there will be conflict. Nothing in Kikamba should be deleted. Because whoever is holding that is holding it for a reason better known to himself, to herself. Leave her alone. Uh, carry on with your, with, with your stuff. Some people will argue that leave that person alone as long as her practice, his practice, does not inconvenience others. If I'm drinking blood and I'm not getting sick with a disease that uh, affects the rest of the populace, leave me alone. You go eat your mandas, right? Yeah, enjoy them. And then you'll get your diabetes. 
I'm not saying mandazi cause in diabetes, but uh, lots of sugar, lots of fat. You continue with your lifestyle, right? Yeah. And, and I think you understand that it's a mockery to tell people to abandon their culture because it's backward. Respect the culture. The children of our generation don't understand Kamba, don't speak Kamba. And I'm coming to that. And that's uh, worrisome to me. Yet they don't speak in good English. Yet they don't speak in good Swahili. And even if they say, oh, we have our chain, it's not well defined. So these are people who are floating. The children of our generation don't understand Kamba, don't speak Kamba. And I'm coming to that. And that's uh, worrisome to me. Yet they don't speak in good English. Yet they don't speak in good Swahili. And even if they say, oh, we have our chain, it's not well defined. So these are people who are floating without a sense of direction. If you don't respect your own culture, you will not respect yourself. And you know what? Psychologically, if you don't respect yourself, you will not have self-esteem, you cannot be productive, you cannot be innovative. Any of our young people who go to school, basic education, high school, colleges, universities and so on, to be educated as a Kenyan, then you must be exposed to the culture you must be able to define your culture. If you have grown up in Nairobi and the parents did not socialize you into the language, you don't speak the language, but that doesn't make you not a Mkamba. However, for you to understand the depth of the Kamba culture, you would still need to understand the language because they are untranslatable concepts. The value of culture is to anchor somebody on the ground. Because you will not be anybody uh, if you are being blown by the wind. And what anchors you, just like the roots anchor tree, is your culture. You try as much as possible to live it, that's it. Kamba culture is this totality of doing things that will help somebody from Kambani and other Kenyans who want to learn uh, something about Kamba to have roots to be anchored down. If you have no culture, you have no roots. And whatever is working today, you will pick it. Whatever is working tomorrow, you will pick it. But when you have a culture, it doesn't mean that other cultures will not influence you, but you have a, 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 frame from which, a frame of reference from which to make decisions on whether you're going a particular way or not. That is what culture is all about. What we call culture goes beyond culture into economic productivity. Innovation, creativity will not happen unless we are confident of ourselves and the culture does give us that confidence, that self-esteem, that self-respect. Once you ignore your background, where you come from, then you are lost. And actually it is respect for your parents and your ancestors that you are doing what they require, you are respecting your own culture. It's actually disrespect to throw it away. If you want somebody in Ukambani, to be very confident, to be innovative, to be creative, the first thing that we should do is to ensure that they respect themselves, they have some confidence and they have some esteem. We have to sacrifice ourselves so that we bring up our generations, our children, with the Kamba cultures. And once we do from grassroots, upwards, from top to bottom, we will preserve our culture. What you have also done is crucially important to a Kiangozo. If uh, more people can come up with a, a, a replica of your Kiangozo, I think we will be getting somewhere slowly. Uh, originally, I saw you somewhere in a forest like Andati Luku. 
<laughs> very impressive uh, wearing that uh, very emblem emblemic uh, skin cloth like a no a nail that yeah? that's very important because somehow you are teaching you are letting the eyes see what is company that's very important one of the culture cultural aspects that i always respect even today it's how we relate to each other, especially the elderly and the young. In our culture, the way I come back culture, the way I greet a young girl and the way I greet a young boy is totally different. Watch and so on. I greet the young man. It's totally different. I don't grab. I don't hug young people that culturally we don't you know traditionally there was no incest at least next to nail in ukambani you know why because what professor munabu was saying you you didn't ever embrace your <laughs> your daughter you don't embrace your niece at all you know you keep distance all these things that we find about incest today about defilement it's not, it's not, it's not Kampa culture, it's not my culture. In fact, all these mandas, we find men killing each other because of a love triangle. You know what? In the Raka, traditionally, you don't go home silent. You start singing. Before you reach home. I'm telling you, so I am telling you, well, if your spouse is cheating, you will find, in the fullness of time, but you will not find them in bed so that you kill one of them. You, you, you won't. So these are things that now are beginning to dawn on us. And even those other Western constructs are beginning to come and they will begin to try to see what good practices can they extract from the Taraka Nidhi, the Nidhi Taraka people, from the Kamba, from the Kikuyu, and so on. Because there are cultural practices that will also make their life worth living. I'm telling you all this is incidences of incest, of defilement, or people killing each other with something called love triangle. It's because we have ignored, it's because our culture, our cultures have been eroded. So one way of, 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 of reverting some of these very negative things is simply to go back to our culture. Precisely. Yes. To me, I am totally convinced whether it is medicine, whether it's religious beliefs, whether it's cultural practices, the food we eat, all of these things are part of who we are. They are part of our culture. And therefore, we should not be saying, let's ignore some bad practices. Because they were not necessarily bad when they were being practiced. But now the context has changed, okay? The disease frameworks have changed, climates have changed, so there are things that we can't do the same. It has a way of uh, reforming itself and uh, introducing its, oh, its new ways of looking at it. And uh, so, um, but the fact that if it is ignored, of course, there are many things that you miss now, you begin to to adopt other cultures because you create a vacuum and once you create a cultural vacuum you 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 fill in that vacuum with another concept other cultures then of course that is like replacing yourself and there are consequences i need circumcision what what the kamba were calling in zaiko i also miss dancing or the dance that they are calling Wazi. There is a way in which campus used to build homes, houses, you know, the round house and so on. There are ways campus used to cook certain things. You know that Kamba Jiko with three stones, you may not know, but those, those three stones, two were fixed. One was not fixed because you could put a different pot, different sizes, on the pot. So this one stone was the one that was being moved around. This is a very important context. So that what Kambas are saying is that you may need to bring some change, but you must begin from a particular point.
you don't have to change all three things, but you begin with one, and then the others come on board. Where can I get a pot like the one that we used to have at home, where you would put water and that water would be like it's in a fridge? In the Raka, if you, if you went and asked for water, people would not ask you who are you. And you know what, in the Raka they would not, so, so, they would not just give you water. They could actually go to the guard with the well and mix it, you know, because they assume that as you are walking, you lost some energy. So traditionally, you never give some of the water, it's called the water of the, of the frog, Rujiruakiura. Rujiruakiura is the water from the river. Yeah. You know, they will find a way, uh, they will get some water and a carabash and uh, go to the guard containing well, you put it and mix it, they give it to you. So, so, so then you, you do two things. You, you know, you take care of your, your dust, but you also refresh your energy. Up to name the Raka. If you waste any Raka home, nobody will ask you whether, whether you eat. They just have your food. Gewanambano. It was storytelling and, and, uh, and mbano, you know where you are told something and then you are supposed to respond so that your mind thinks. One of the most important, which indicates that the Kamba community really is a community that spread throughout Africa, Congo, South Africa and so on, is Ndai, the parable. And one of the parable is I found in Kikamba we say Nedhiye. So you think as a Mukamba, Nedhiye, what is this thing that you found? The answer is Nedhiye Mundi na Mundeta Mayotanea Munoseki. In other words, I found a pygmy and an and an Hottentot sitting uh, in the shade of a piece of grass. Now, that is heavy message. This Mukamba is telling you he has traversed this country, Central Africa, all the way to South Africa, which is true. This is how we migrated and back again. But most important, he's telling you that he actually has seen deserts because there, when he found the pygmy and the Hottentot, they were sitting together and there were no trees. It was only pieces of grass. So the, the hidden message is we must be very sensitive about climate change. Now, nobody says that. But this Ngawa Nambano is extremely important. We now are going through a pandemic. And this pandemic of COVID-19 is something that is not new entirely. Again, Bano. Okay? Uh, Mukamba will say, Kwata ndai na kwata. Sui! That's Kasong, eh? Sui! What is that? The answer is, Kasonika latia umuyata. Sui! Kasonika latia umuyata. In other words, Mukamba is saying, Sui! What is that? The answer is, it was a bird which has had gone to bring a disease from Yata, a pandemic. So be careful. When you hear Sui, be careful. Because that bird you see floating here may be bringing a pandemic from another place. So this is extremely important. And I am hoping myself that moving forward, we shall, in our syllabus, in our universities, try to inculcate some of this indigenous cultural knowledge into our system so that our people can understand. Something else that I miss quite a bit, and that was my grandmother calling me a husband. So I felt like, yeah, I felt like I had a wife. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to some people, that's trash. Oh, but trash. our ancestors, our parents and grandparents knew what they were doing. 
or they were doing this unconsciously for a very specific purpose. It was part of education. Uh, why, why would they center everything on sexuality? They had a reason and they were building a community through those jobs, songs, dances, and engaged. They, these kind of things inculcated into the minds of the young, very important life lessons and so forth. Let's establish, and I would say myself, not only in each, each, each community, but in each county, let us establish cultural centers because everybody has those cultural centers and let those cultural centers have everything that is who we are and let them be open so that our future generation and it's called intergenerational equalization or equity our future generation will know that this particular community survived under difficult conditions because they were able to do ABC. By 1800, Kikamba was the most spoken language in Eastern and Central Africa. It was known from as far south as Mozambique to the far north as Ethiopia and Somalia. And so, because it was a language of trade. Missionaries suggested using Kikamba, not Swahili, because Swahili was a coastal language smaller than Kikamba at the time, as a language of spiritual instruction. When imperialists came, Germans and the British, they also made the same proposal, using Kikamba as the imperial language because it was known of uh, extensive areas. Uh, today, Kikamba is probably the fourth most spoken in Kenya alone. It has shrunk that much. And I think in the next few decades, it will be overtaken by other languages. Other languages are Luo, Kikuyu. And uh, Luya, although there is no language called Luya, and the Kalenjin also competes some, somehow. So, what happened that it uh, went down? It went down, it lost because the Kamba people lost their economic power. And to, the, to some extent, they, they lost their political power. Okay? If you want to preserve this, give those back not so much politics but economy economic power and drives a culture 